Practical 2 – Data Presentation, Distribution and Correlation. In this session we will apply some of the presentation techniques and methods that we learnt during Lectures 3 and Lectures 4. As with the last practical, all data is on MOL. In addition, if you have any issues with some of the things which rely on knowledge gained last week, ask for help or look at the practical document from last week. The learning outcomes for today are as follows. We're going to learn how to display data using graphs and how to properly annotate and label these. We're going to learn how to create a histogram and reinforce our knowledge of these. We're going to be able to perform skewness and kurtosis analysis and combine this with our knowledge of data distributions to comment on data sets. We're going to perform Spearman's rank analysis and calculate Pearson's product moment correlation. This is the end of the introduction. If you'd like a recap of the lecture material from the past two lectures, please keep listening. If not, you can continue on with the practical, starting with section two. So in lecture three, we learnt that histograms are a fantastic way of sorting uneven data sets, such as that generated during the first lecture. These enable the distribution into manageable and even boundaries, which give us usable information about the distribution. We do this by grouping the data into smaller ranges called bins. Here we have the example of UK population data I used in the lecture. Here we know that there are seven guesses up to five million but not lower than zero. And similarly we know that there are 32 guesses up to 65 million but not lower than 60 million. Here is an example of this histogram created from this data set. Please note the important noting of axis labels correctly. We have frequency on the y-axis and population on the x-axis in millions of people. We also learned about the cumulative frequency diagram, which is also known as a cumulative frequency curve, sometimes displayed using percentage, as it will be today in the practical. It's excellent for determining the number of data points which lie above or below certain values, for example the med median and the quartiles. We can do this using the formula we learned in lecture 2 i for total cumulative frequency, which is 99 here. We can work out the median is 29, Q3 is 32, and Q1 is 28, based on its position in the data set. We also learned about types of distribution. The important ones to note here are the normal distribution in the top left, the uniform distribution in the top right, the skewed distributions, whether it be right skewed, a positive skew, or a left skewed, a negative skew, and the modal distributions on the right-hand side, be it bimodal or multimodal. We learnt that skewness is the measure of how skewed to the left or the right a data set is, and that we use Pearson's skewness to denote this, which is the average minus the median times by three, or divided by the standard deviation. When the mean is greater than the median, we get a right skew, which is positive skewness, denoted by a positive number, when the mean is less than the median, we get left skew, which is negative skewness, denoted by a negative number. Zero equals no skew. The larger the number, the bigger the skew. We also learned about kurtosis, which is the measure of how peaky a data set is. Mesokurtic refers to a normally distributed data set. Leptokurtic refers to a peaky data set. And platykurtic refers to a negative or flatter data set, referred to peaky as positive and flatter as negative. Two equations define this. The first is the sum of each data point minus the mean, all to the four, divided by the standard deviation to the four times by the sample size, as on screen. This first uses three as a definition of a mesokurtic data set, a normally distributed data set. So anything more than three is leptokurtic, Anything less than 3 is platycurtic. The second equation, which we're going to use today, improves upon this by taking 3 from the result. Therefore, 0 is a normal distribution, more than 0 is leptokurtic, and less than 0 is platycurtic. We also learned about correlation. This is the measure of the strength of a relationship between two variables. A bivariate is two variables. Correlation techniques produce a correlation coefficient which is a single value to estimate the strength of the relationship which varies between minus 1 and 1. 0 equals no correlation, 1 perfect positive correlation, and minus 1 perfect negative correlation. 
This varies as with the patterns below. We learnt two different methods for determining correlation. The first, the Spearman rank method. This is a non-parametric technique, which means that the data does not have to be normally distributed to use. Again, it measures the strength and direction of the relationship. To conduct Spearman's rank, we rank two data sets from biggest to smallest. Ergo, we give the biggest value a 1. Its equation looks like this. We take the sum of the differences between the ranks. We square. We sorry. We take the differences between the ranks. We square them. We take the sum of that. We multiply it by six. We divide it by the sample size Q minus by the sample size, and then use this value and take and use one and take this value from it. We'll step through this slowly in an example today. The other technique we use is Pearson's Product Moment Correlation Coefficient, often referred to as simply R. As with Spearman's, the possible values range from minus 1 to 1. It is a measure of the strength of a linear relationship between two variables. The variables should be normally distributed to use. If no clear correlation is found, it doesn't mean there isn't a relationship. There may be a relationship which isn't visible, i.e. if the relationship is nonlinear. Thank you for listening to this summary. You can now continue with the practical.